welcome to What's On at Cineworld, where we look at what you can check out at Cineworld Cinemas, and we look at the latest news from the world of Hollywood. Here's what's coming up on today's show. We'll be looking at the news that Tom Cruise is heading to space. No, really, in actuality, in real life, not just in a movie, in space, Tom Cruise. We'll take a look at what you can check out at Cineworld Cinemas, including Schemers, a David Attenborough documentary, and Matthew Bourne's The Red Shoes. And finally, we'll be discussing comments about a possible Tenet 2. Honestly, this news should really should come as no surprise. Yeah. Like, Not we content about... with jumping off a cliff, <laughs> Tom Cruise <laughs> goes to space. Yeah, so... <laughs> this is this is the wackiest news. Of, I mean, and 2020 has been full of wacky news, but really it, it comes as no surprise. Like when I read it, I was like, wow, that's weird. And then about 10 seconds, I was like, nope, but it totally makes sense, though. Of this is, is the news that Tom Cruise and uh, Doug Lyman are going to be working together on a new film. At the moment, it's just called Untitled Tom Cruise slash SpaceX Project. But the key to this is this is going to be the first film to be shot outside of planet earth it's going to be it's going to be shot in actual not the whole film but a sequence of the movie as far as we can tell is going to be shot in actual space yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah um i don't i don't know how they're going to do that like i, I get obviously spacex is going to be running commercial uh space flights and uh, offering out seats on this flight but like how long does the flight last how big is this scene? How integral to the movie is it? Is Tom Cruise piloting the spacecraft? Is Tom Cruise <laughs> a passenger on the spacecraft? Is it is it snakes on a spaceship? Like what what's going to happen in this bit of film? Like is he get? I'm hoping he's not getting outside the spaceship. I, I imagine because whoever's doing the risk assessment for this film, whoever, whoever, whichever poor sod in the production house is having to do the risk assessment, is just like, is this really necessary? We've been faking spaceships for years. Like we, we oh, now yeah. do that been... perfectly well. No one will know the difference. The, like the first ever movie we ever did was that one with the you know the rocket crashes into the moon. Like it's been like since the start of celluloid, we've <laughs> yeah. been doing fake space things. Do we <laughs> yeah. really need to go into actual space? <laughs> we'll put a foam pie on his face, and then we'll just be like, "Cool, that's that's the moon. There we go." And then we'll just we'll that's the moon. Make Tom, we'll do film to Tom Cruise from like really far away, and he can be really <laughs> small in the frame going to the moon. We don't need to fly him to actual space. Because yes, the cost this, of this, this, must, this is going to end up being one of the most expensive what, right? movies of all time. So according to the Space Shuttle Almanac, uh, which is a Twitter feed that basically charts like, you know, all the people that are going out into space and everything. They've got this amazing uh, picture, which we'll be having up on screen during this, that is showing basically like the flight plan, like the, the itinerary for flight plans going forward. And it has been confirmed that... <laughs> that the SpaceX Taurus mission is going to have Doug Lyman and Tom Cruise with one more seat uh, to be filled, which I'll presume will be the cameraman. You'd uh, hope and, so. <laughs> <laughs> and they are going into space to film a part of this movie in October next year. Like, I mean, I know travel restrictions should probably be lifted um, by, you know, by October 2021 so that, you know, film crews can go in and out of other countries to film. Perhaps this is the way forward. Like, we can't travel to Australia to film, so we'll just go into space instead. Yeah, so you want a Martian landscape? I'll take you to Mars. <laughs> I mean, you've got to be you got to be on that sort of point as well with this with this mission to space that they're now on. It's not even a, it's not even a shoot anymore. It's a mission. You like, trip, check your kit. You don't want to get out there oh, and be like, oh, oh my God, we didn't charge the batteries. We, we did no, not charge the batteries. We can pick this up did... October 2023. <laughs> we did some filming the other day, and uh, one of the people on our crew forgot a sort of like, not a crucial part of the kit, but it was like a, oh God, that's really annoying. We could have actually really done with that with that bit of kit there if you did that going up into space like as you said like oh i forgot to bring the charger for the camera mm. and the battery life one it's not that great really i need to plug it into the mains we're gonna have to do this quickly whatever this <laughs> i just i just can't imagine what scene it is that they're gonna film like yeah because it it's got to be the scene has to be that they're on a commercial space flight. You know, that's that's all I can imagine they're going to be able to do in a on a commercial space flight because it's there's going to have to be so many regulations in terms of like 
just even to be on board, you have to, you're going to have to be so careful that, yeah, I, I can't imagine they're going to be like, and then the aliens attack or he gets <laughs> out, you know, like it's going to have to be. And he sat in his seat the whole way there. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's got to be some of that. But again, like, as we said at the top of this, it's almost unsurprising that it's Tom Cruise <laughs> doing this. Like, of course it was going to be Tom Cruise was going to be the first actor to film something in actual space. Yeah, it just goes to show that I think Tom Cruise got into movies because uh, they, they wouldn't let him go to the theme park anymore, like, because he went there too much. I don't know, like, Tom Cruise is a serious adrenaline junkie, and uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's great. I, I think he's, he's, a, he's clearly, now, he's now a pioneer, a literal pioneer <laughs> <laughs> in terms of stunt work. A couple of new releases for you to check out this week. Schemers is available at Limited Cineworld Sites, which is a uh, British comedy uh, about a footballer Davy whose career ends is set in 1979 uh, so his football career comes to an end and he falls for the student nurse that's looking after him and this leads to him kind of becoming a bit of a schemer himself and putting on these gigs and kind of like booking acts that are sort of almost too big for the venues that they've got leading up to them booking Iron Maiden for mm -hmm. uh, a big gig and then falling into uh, the traps of these uh, gangsters it's been compared to train spotting and I'm guessing that's just because it Scott. is a bit British. Yeah, it's got exactly. Yeah, it's got <laughs> that, that is what that, is what, that <laughs> was what I would get as well. But you know what? Like, it looks really cool. I, I, you know, I watched the trailer for it this morning, and I, yeah, it looks like it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's got a really interesting vibe. I, I like these sort of um, couple of lads out of their depth movies, and and I think this, and also I think you know. Uh, when it's really heavily baked into Scottish culture, it just elevates it to this whole new level. Because there's something, there's some, there's this kind of like brilliant marriage on screen of Scottish comedy where people manage to walk the line brilliantly between being like quite jovial, chatty, and like having a bit of fun with each other, and then being incredibly threatening <laughs> on the like <laughs> on the flip side. And I think this film seems to be capturing that magic quite well. Of like. He's just running some gigs. That seems completely fine. Gangsters. They're a ga gangsters. You know. right now, yeah. And it's based on, it's apparently based on a true story as well. So it, I think it would be very interesting to see this sort of brought to life. And I, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine the kind of schemes and japes they have to get into to uh, book Iron Maiden for a random Scottish gig that no one knows. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> So you can get tickets for that in the video description down below. Let's see if it's available at one of your Cineworld cinemas. Uh, available uh, at most Cineworld sites, but only next Monday. It's David Attenborough, A Life on Our Planet. Lovely David Attenborough doing a documentary <laughs> about planet Earth. Which, you know, Tom Cruise is looking at being like, it's planet Earth, mate. Boring. I'm off into space, you lad. So <laughs> behind the times, Attenborough. Um, this looks like this looks great. I, I, you know, Attenborough documentaries are uh, their own genre now. I would argue, um, and yeah, this seeing one, I, I imagine seeing one on like the big screen is going to be utterly fantastic because I think they've always done a very good job of telling, you know, rather than just going here are some whales, these are a bunch of penguins. These have interactions. They managed to make the stories cinematic and engaging, and they managed to really like over the course of having filmed loads of stuff. Um, craft these really intricate narratives of small moments that reveal obviously like the behaviors of animals and nature and all of that stuff but really drag you in on that kind of like personal level that you get invested in like the plight of that tiny penguin um, mm -hmm. and I think this is like you know obviously like a lot of his uh, recent series have focused very heavily on like different sections of life and you know he's, he's recently just done ones about the oceans and, and about um all the different sort of continents and i think here you've got this more broad view and it's obviously much more as most of his more recent work is about sort of uh the conversations around humans impact on the mm -hmm. planet and the ways in which we can reverse that and i think that's a very noble cause that uh, obviously sir david attenborough has taken up um and one that's very important and I, I think this this movie looks like it's something that could uh hopefully change a few minds Absolutely, yeah. So that is only available next Monday, you know, the coming Monday. So uh, do check out the video description down below and book some tickets, see if it's available at your local Cineworld. I think it's going to be really interesting to check out up on the big screen, as you say. Like, I mean, Adam documentaries are awesome. Like, they're always really good. And like the work that goes into them mm. is like next level. So yeah, I think seeing that on the big screen would be amazing. Same as Matthew Bourne's The Red Shoes, which is only available at the majority of Cineworld Cinema sites next Wednesday, the 30th of 
September. Um, if you like your ballet, if you like a bit of ballet on your biscuits, go to Cineworld Cinemas and check out Matthew Bourne's The Red Shoes. Um, it, it, ballet is not something that I've, I've got a personal invested interest in, but I do think there is quite a bit of majesty about watching the ballet and sort of especially watching on the big screen. And like it's got a musical score by Bernard Herrmann, who uh, is one of my actual favorite composers. He did a, a lot of music for The Twilight Zone. Um, I uh, this is this looks very, very lovely. Yeah, and I think it's obviously like a more affordable way to see the ballet as well. Oh, yeah. um, you know, if like if you're if you're one of your big trips a year is to go see the ballet, and it's obviously not really happening right now. So this is this is something that can tide you over if that's something you like. And I think also the other benefit is it's not quite as uh, snooty as the regular ballet that when you go. So you, you can experience this, but you could also have a drink and some popcorn. So there, there is that benefit. <laughs> Get a nice little hot dog while you're there. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and looking ahead to October, if you are an unlimited card holder at Cineworld, which if you're not, why the heck are you not? There's some cool unlimited screenings coming up in October. So if you're not aware, Cineworld Cinemas have these unlimited screenings, which are exclusive screenings for Cineworld Cinemas that you can only see if you are an unlimited card holder. And these are usually like, you get to see the films a couple of weeks ahead of time. I saw Parasites at Cineworld Cinemas before it was on general release because I was an unlimited card uh, holder. And we've got some really cool ones coming up this uh, next month in October. St. Maud which is the new uh, A24 movie, which is the studio that did Hereditary and Midsummer, And I, I loved Midsummer. I thought Midsummer mm. was absolutely awesome. I, I thought it was so, so good. And this kind of, you watch the trailer for this and that's the kind of vibe that you get from <clears> it, that hereditary Midsummer feel. It's about a young nurse who is looking to save the soul of a cancer patient that she's caring for, no matter the cost. And she sort of spirals further and further into this uh, descent of madness. It looks super creepy. And uh, I mean, it, and it's got great, great uh, critical receptions from the festival circuit that it did last year. 94% rating on Rotten Tomatoes in the critics, Ooh. you know, if that sort of thing tickles your fancy. But the trailer for this really tickles my fancy. And I think this is a studio that's got a great pedigree behind it already. And I'm, uh, yeah, this looks really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think of all the films that uh, we're sort of talking about this week, this is like my pick of the week. This is utterly awesome. It, it looks really, really incredible. It's, it's the debut of Rose Glass. And I, I, yeah, and I think um, like the, the lead character, Maud, seems like one of the more interesting sort of leading ladies. Like all the reviews have said like... Um, she somehow manages to remain sympathetic throughout the film. Um, you know, she gets into nursing because clearly she's had some sort of like trauma before. And that's mm -hmm. also what held, like, what sort of converted her to uh, her own sort of twisted version of Christianity, I guess. And she, as she sort of descends into this spiral of not being able to tell what's real and what's not and having visions and all this kind of stuff. And she's punishing herself in all these various different ways, like, and yeah, and like uh, almost like the woman, the 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 patient that she's treating, who she's trying to save her soul at all costs, is almost like the complete opposite. is is seen as this sort of like utterly debauched um, parallel to uh, mm -hmm. Maud's character. In that you know, Maud is probably like almost living a life of like a like she's like a ghost throughout life. And uh, yeah, it's all these things that they say that she only really exists in. Uh, the world of this one woman, which is this kind of lavish ex dancer's palace, palatial like <laughs> apartment, and then Maud lives in her tiny flat. And you see very small glimpses of Maud out in the real world interacting with real people. And that's where you really get a sort of like proper glimpse of the psychosis and stuff. It seems fascinating. It's one of those ones that I think is going to just like stay with you for a bit and you're gonna oh go, yeah you're gonna come out of it and be like wow that was amazing and then you're gonna go home and you're gonna go to bed and you just be like i'm gonna be up all night thinking about this now because it was it looks yeah yeah it looks like it's really gonna mess you up absolutely i'm really looking forward to checking this out next month uh at the unlimited screenings particularly because like yeah as i said i, I was I, I really liked hereditary but i loved midsummer mm -hmm. and like I, and as you said there midsummer is a movie that's really stayed with me um after i'd finished watching it like in the in the moment of watching it i was like wow this is like it's this awesome sort of slow burn horror movie i'm gonna really suck and i'm really invested into into all of this and i'm really like curious to see where this is going to go next but the days and the weeks after i saw it i was like mm. i need to see it again i was online everywhere just sort of like reading bits like what did i miss what what bits and pieces did i miss yeah so and i think that, that the same order is going to give us that that to give me that same level of pleasure. So I'm really it's excited that, yeah, about It's got that. that same level of density, doesn't it? Like Midsummer mm -hmm. had so many brilliant bits of um, just sort of 
uh, scenic storytelling in which there's there's drawings like the whole movie in Midsummer is laid out in the first scene. It's all on yeah, the wall, yeah. and like, I think this with all the religious imagery here, this really opens this up to that sort of same level of like uh, visual representation. And I think it also looks like it has that same kind of creeping dread that Midsummer had. Like Midsummer presented really horrible things as if they were just like part and parcel of the, the week we're having. And I feel like this <laughs> this is uh, from the looks of the trailer. This really is doing that too. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and taking a slightly different route uh, from St. Maud, uh, the other limited screening we've got next month in October is Pixie. Um, basically, I'm going to sum this up with just a few words. Alec Baldwin plays an Irish gangster priest. Like that's the that's that that's how I'm going to sum this movie up. Uh, it, it's a it's a comedy movie about these two lads who accidentally run over a guy uh, who was actually chasing after Pixie, played by Olivia Cook, and then they go on an adventure to kind of get rid of the body. They end up and get involved in drugs and. Alec Baldwin playing an Irish gangster priest. He leads a he leads a sort of coven of Irish gangster priests, and that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, I feel like this this sort of fits that same mold as schemas to me almost. Like it's obviously mm -hmm. a bit it's a bit more far fetched and a bit more fantastical, but um, it's that same sort of like uh, that same sort of comedy of like. Uh, people who are very unprepared for a situation being thrust into a situation that is really quite extreme. And obviously this takes a sort of more, a far more comedic bent to it with priests with guns, amen. <laughs> like, it's, you know, <laughs> it, it does look really, really funny. Alec Baldwin looks like he's going to have, be having a whale of a time as this uh, gangster priest. And yeah, I think the sort of interaction between the three leads looks like it's going to be, there's sort of a, there's a sort of unspoken tension between all of them anyway, like because of yeah. the situation they're in, but also because they obviously all quite like each other. Um, and yeah, that the sort of, I think the banter of this road trip uh, will be what carries the movie. And then the action is just sort of an added benefit. But if none of those really tickle your fancy, but you are still looking to go to the cinema this week, there are other releases. Bill and Ted is obviously still in cinemas, as is New Mutants. Uh, Bill and Ted is a bit of, is a very hearty recommendation for me. Uh, we did our review of that last week, which you go and check out. I thought it was excellent and you should all be excellent to each other and party on dudes i had a, a lot of fun with it and new mutants was a, a bit of a surprise for me uh you know we, we kind of talked about the the long road that it mm -hmm. took to get to the big screen as we as did bill and ted so those are two films that i definitely think you should be checking out as well as tenet which brings us nicely to the other bit of news that John David Washington, who was the lead, the protagonist, if you will, of uh, Tenet, um, spoke with Esquire. Uh, so, you know, he's talking about Tenet and Christian Nolan's time-bending movie. And he was asked if he felt that a, a sequel to the movie had been set up. So for Tuant, maybe. Um, here's what uh, John David Washington had to say. In my mind, that's a yes. We will be doing this again. We'll see you in a couple of years. In reality, I don't know. Chris does what he wants. Maybe he has something that he's developed for years that he wants to do next. Maybe he's been inspired by something else he sees and wants to do that. I don't know. I hope we get to do it again. I hope we get to explore more because I think we found something really unique. And also in that interview as well, he talks about some of the fan theories that have come out afterwards. We'll try and, you know, we're going to keep this spoiler free in case people haven't been to see Tenants yet. But if you haven't, why haven't you been to see Tenants yet? Mm -hmm. Click the, the link in the video description down below, book your tickets. Um, and so we won't really go into some of those fan theories, but would you want to see a, a sequel to Tenet? I think there's definitely scope to. I, I, I would be interested to see, like, I, I think the the way the protagonist is left with um, the amount of knowledge he gathers throughout the film definitely sets up a sequel in which you, you see him uh, advance with that. Because I think, like, the, the first film is so much about being confronted with all this information for the first time and working your way out through a world in which like your, well, your world's been turned upside down front to back almost. And like, you know, you, I think by the end of the film, he's got a bit, a bit of a better grasp on what's going on, but I would love to see that be taken into the next stage where it's like, you know, he's comfortable now. He's like, mm -hmm. in, you know, like in the matrix where it goes from like, I think the Matrix probably did it too quickly, but Neo is a complete noob at the Matrix. And then by the end of the film, he's the one. Whereas yeah. it would be more interesting to see him still be sort of like he kind of cracks it at the end of the film. And then the second film, 
here's the competent Neo in the Matrix. And then you go down the line, you go like, okay, here's superhero. He's got all the power kind of thing. And, you know, I think maybe the Wachowskis skipped over that a little bit quickly. But <laughs> I think with Tenet, you could do something like that where you get a sort of second act of um, really uh, the protagonist's abilities with mm -hmm. the time manipulation stuff, uh, take, like move into their own. And he can really like, you see him begin to sort of, as we've said before, like it's a spy film at its heart. And you really see like what can be done in terms of like, spying and that sort of thing using this ability yeah absolutely yeah i think it'd be a really interesting setup for a sequel and you know to, to go on further adventures kind of in this world it's 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 kind of un christopher nolan in a way though mm -hmm. because outside of the dark knights trilogy you know really that's because it was a, a superhero movie and when you do superhero movies you tend to have to do sequels to those if they do well at the box office but you know inception didn't have a sequel interstellar didn't have a sequel memento didn't have a sequel i, I really he kind of feels like he's a one and done director at his heart unless of course it is something that he like as as uh you know they were saying in the interview there it's something that he can really get, sink his teeth into and find this sort of new avenue or you know uh or you know as they said maybe he's, he's got another another crazy idea that no one's ever done on on film before that you know it's not going into space though it's not that crazy but yeah. um you know the I, i'd be curious to see though what what nolan would bring to a to a sequel movie well, that's the thing. I think the benefit with Tenant is that, like, there must be so many ideas that they just had to leave out of the film because of technological, like, technological implications. Like, there must have been so many things they thought, like, we could do this, and they went, "Oh, well, that's actually a bit impossible with the current tech that we have." But give it two years, and the rate mm -hmm. at which you know the rate at which cinematography equipment is progressing, there might be a way in which to do that come two years' time, and they might be able to, like do even more with this one sort of mechanic that they built the film around. And I think that's the interesting thing about Nolan as a director. There's always something that he wants to focus on, like obviously like time and it's sort of the way it, people experience it or the way uh, in which it dilates and all of that kind of stuff has always been something like, you know, Memento, Interstellar, all of that kind of stuff all plays with time in different ways in, in cinema. But I think Tenet is the one that really hinges on that mechanic in terms of the film making and i think that's probably something that really entertained him in the creation of tenet <laughs> and i think that's probably something that you know you would want to revisit because basically what you've done here is come up with a whole new way of making films yeah oh absolutely yeah. and i i think there could be something really really interesting in that if you haven't seen tenet yet i do recommend you go and check it out uh, the link is down below in the video description go get your tickets check it out at city world cinemas because there's a lot to explore in a potential sequel movie the only way to find out what that could be is to go see it for the first time or maybe even the second time yeah the second time's good because it'll make sense second time maybe <laughs> Well, that is all we've got time for discussing what's on at Cineworld this week. If you want to go and book tickets for any of the films that we've discussed, then click the link in the video description down below. I've been Laurie Blake. I've been joined by Luke Owen. And that was what's on at Cineworld.